My name is Beth Pratt Sitola, and I work for UNAVCO, which is a not for profit consortium that provides geodetic geophysics support to um, US researchers at a um, wide variety of universities. Um, I am an education specialist and also a previous GPS researcher. So in today's lesson, we introduced teachers to the concept of geodesy, which is, um, in a broad sense, just been measuring the Earth, the size and the shape, um, and the way that mass moves around on the Earth and redistributes itself. Um, and in particular, we emphasize GPS, which is the Global Positioning System. Um, everybody's familiar with GPS at least a little bit because they have it all in their phones. That's how we know where we are. It's how our cars can, you know, have onboard GPS systems. But a lot of people don't know um, that it's actually a really important um, earth science tool for understanding the earth and how plates move, how volcanoes, um, you know, expand and contract and how ice um, melts um, or is, is heavier. It's a particularly great opportunity to combine math with earth science um, or even with physics because it's a practical application of these skills. You can see why you would care about vectors or, or speed or, or, um, or things of that nature. The first activity that we introduced to the teachers was really an introduction to GPS. What is it? Um, and so there's a model um, that we have using um, gum wrapper or um, sort of uh, gum pieces because they actually are shaped sort of like a GPS um, satellite with the solid center and the little wings. And so you start by using these um, uh, satellites um, and you start with three of them in a string and the string represents the distance and, and the time lag between the satellite and what the receiver would, would when it would pick it up on earth and so it's a demonstration that a teacher can do they can either use students to help them with the different satellite locations or they can use a smaller setup where they have like ring stands in a classroom and and a strings go you know with each of the the gum satellites on it and strings going down um, and the teachers make small um, replicas or the students when it comes to the students time of the um, GPS receivers, the high precision ones that we use for the earth science research with a gum drop on the top and little toothpick legs because and, and, and those are attached to a, a transparency piece that you can slide around just like the plate is sliding. So you scaffold them from thinking about the how the satellites come down and you can pinpoint the location by using multiple satellites. And then as the plate moves um, uh, can, over a piece of graph paper, they can start to see the relationship between the location, changing location data and the, um, and, and the velocity of the plate and how we're measuring that. So, and that moves them into um, the, the graphing exercise and being able to say, oh, I, I can see that um, the data in this that is coming from a real station must be telling me this plate is moving south and west, and but the station is actually moving up a little bit. So then once they get the basic idea of how to read GPS data and what it means in a physical intuitive way, we move on to having an activity related to looking at two stations um, in Southern California and how one, they're on either side, uh, they have very different velocities. One is moving quite rapidly towards the northwest, the other move appears to be moving quite slowly. And what you find is that the San Andreas Fault is between those two stations. Um, and even though we're used to thinking of faults as always having the arrows in the opposite direction, um, what we have in this case is um, the one on the Pacific plate is moving very fast and the one on the um, North American plate is getting dragged along a little bit slowly behind it. Um, and this you know, helps the students see that this difference between these two stations is really important to understanding the earthquake hazard in this area. And we would know how big the earthquake would need to be in order to, to make up for <laughs> um, this difference in the speed. Um, and then we moved on to a final activity related to interpreting um, Asian, uh, especially in the Sumatra area, GPS data um, from a variety of stations that did show an earthquake um, that had a number of tsunami-related fatalities that we were trying to better understand.